There again, the hypocrites are focusing on what man can see and, and, and the emotions that these men seeing them will get. Oh, he, he's such a pious person. Uh, he fasts all the time. Uh, therefore, he, when, when they fast, they, they make themselves up to be uh, look even worse than they did. Uh, so these people look at him and, and praise them for being so godly. God says, don't do that. Uh, as a matter of fact, you, you make yourself up uh, to where these people don't don't even know that you're fasting. You know, don't don't throw it out there so they can see it. Uh, the Father is the only one that that really needs to know that you're fasting. Um, there's nothing wrong with with really telling someone that you're fasting, as long as you're doing it in in the right mindset. Okay, uh, your spouse, for example. Uh, you can tell them you're fasting and let them support you but uh, you have to go around the house yes, I'm, I'm still fasting day three and I'm still doing it um, no not at all you're not supposed to brag about it um, just let them know and they should in love uh, support you in it uh, things like that we move on to, to uh, verse 19 do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where the thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21, very important verse. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Wherever you put your value, is where your heart is going to be. If you value your personal possessions and money and cars and fame, then your heart is going to be set on these things. Okay, this is where your focus is going to be. You're going to be focused on gaining them. You're going to be focused on keeping them, and you're going to be very, uh, uh, very disappointed when you lose them. But God says. Uh, store for yourselves treasures in heaven these treasures that are going to last forever they're not going to be taken away from you you're not going to get an instant return on these treasures are you you're not going to get to see them right away you're not going to get to enjoy them in this life but really does that matter because when you set your treasure in heaven then your focus will be in heaven. Your heart will be in heaven and not on this earth. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Verse 24, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Very, very important. You cannot serve God and money at the same time. Can you use money? Yes, but you cannot serve it. You cannot make it the focus of your life. God is our focus, is our object of our affections. Okay, we do not serve money. We serve God. You cannot serve both at the same time. Okay, Where is your heart going to be? Where is your focus? Verse 25, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Uh, pardon me, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you of, not of more value than, than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. 
They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Jesus is saying, do not focus even on the mundane things of life. Okay, I'm not saying these things are unimportant. Okay, food obviously is important. Okay, you don't have food, you die. Uh, clothing, you'll get arrested, uh, you go cold. Uh, food and clothing are important, but you have to have faith in God, okay? He, he cares for you. Um, if, if you're focusing on the food and the clothing and you're worrying about where it's going to come from, then you don't have faith in God uh, that he's going to provide. He promises to provide these things for you. So you don't worry about them. Now, does that mean that you don't work for uh, food or your clothing? No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that at all. You do work for your food. You do work for your clothing and support your family. But you don't put your focus on these things. You don't worry about these things. Because God says, I will provide these things for you. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day are its own troubles. Let's look back at uh, verse uh, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. God is saying, don't worry about it. If you look towards me, if you focus on me, seek me first and my righteousness, and I will provide for you all of your needs. All of them. Now this is one of these verses that uh, the health and wealth people manage to twist around. They focus on the part that says all these things will be added unto you. Okay? But God says, seek ye first God and His righteousness. Not the things that will be added to you. But they flip it around and say, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Yes. But that's not what your focus is supposed to be. Okay, when you focus on it that way, you're saying, uh, I go to church, uh, I read my Bible, I, I send money to this ministry. Look, I'm focusing on God, so he should bless me. He should be giving me all this stuff. And when it doesn't happen... What do you do? You say, hey God, where's my stuff? I've given to you, I've done all this stuff. Where's my compensation? You're focusing on the blessing and not God, right? Seek first God and his righteousness. When you do that, when you focus on God, then these other things tend to blur out, okay? Just like in a picture. And they become uh, the part of the background. They don't. They don't matter as much. Uh, when your pantry starts to get low, you don't get worried if you're focused on God. You say, "Well, God's going to provide. I'm just going to keep doing His will and what He wants me to do. He's going to provide for me." And then that's when God comes in the back door and, and starts to fill your pantry. Okay, it starts to. Uh, when you start to run low on money and you say well I'm, I'm still going to give to the church even though we don't have a whole lot of money uh, I'm going to bless these people maybe I'm going to pay for this person's meal because he doesn't have any money uh, I'm going to, to donate some time or some money to the, this mission um, 
we don't have a lot, but uh, it's it's you know I know it's what God would want.